Hey guys, when it was the second Friday the 13th of this month, I decided, eh, you know what? Maybe it's about time I gone and done this because it is available on Netflix. And by this, I mean, watch the first four Friday the 13th films. Why not go further? Glad you didn't ask. Five isn't on there, so I'd have to skip. And then they have six, seven, and eight. They don't have nine, they don't have 10. They don't have the remake. Now, anyhow, talking about the first movie here. This is one that I had, hadn't really seen in its entirety in one setting, but I didn't really care too much for it. And that didn't then, didn't now. And to be frank with you, though I've seen most of the entries, I believe that the 2009 remake is the best. So let's just get into the first film. It's like 1980. We got Kevin Bacon in it. I think it's his very first role. These uh, camp counselors are killed in the 50s. Then we flash forward to uh, you know a good time later. I think it's 79, 80. This girl, real cheerful gal, she's headed to Camp Crystal Lake. She needs a bum a ride. All the locals are like, you don't want to go there. Turn around now. They don't drive her there the full way, so she has to get another ride. And on their way in, uh, she has a bit of a disagreement, I guess, with the seemingly not talking driver. Gets out, gets chased in the woods, gets her throat slashed. This movie has effects from Tom Savini. I know everyone holds him in high regard. I think he's okay. I mean, I've seen some of his work that was not really blowing me away. Some of the stuff here is a little shoddy. More on that in a bit. So, uh, as we continue, we uh, and that, that did throw me for a bit of a loop because the way this girl's introduced, it's like she's going to be the final girl. And uh, I swear there's just too many people. And uh, so she gets killed early on. We end up finding out about these other folks. They're going to be camp counselors at the revived camp, I think it is. Uh, I know that's a plot line in the second film. <laughs> Anyways, uh, they're just kind of goof around. I don't even think they really have lines. It's just, let's do something goofy and get it on film. So, they're kind of hooking up and stuff later on, and they're getting killed off one by one. This doesn't really surprise the audience in any way. I mean, if you're watching this movie, it's probably because you know of Jason Voorhees. So anyhow, uh, Kevin Bacon gets killed. He's like laying in this bed and the spear comes up through his neck on the other side, which is really good aim. And it's not entirely believable, but in the scant time it's shown on screen, it doesn't look bad. So I gotta give Savini some props for going all out in that. As the movie goes on, we have, you know, a higher blood count, death tolls piling up. This lady comes by and she's like, oh, hey, I miss Voorhees. Yeah, I mean, you almost can't even hear her say her name correctly. And she's like, yeah, so my, my son Jason was drowned a while back and now I have to kill all of you. As she says this to the final girl. And that's one of the faults with this movie. Yeah, it's kind of cool that it's a whodunit mystery, but for any of those to work, you have to have players that the audience picks from. Hmm, I think it's Jeff. Nah, nah, it had to be Rick. No, how about Ashley? Who done it with someone showing up in the last 10 minutes saying, ta da, it was me? It's pretty pathetic. So, uh, she, final girl, ends up fighting her. There's uh, this one guy, his body was killed and put in the tree. And then he like falls out of the tree and this is a recurring gag in these films he's kind of like whenever the girl comes across his body just kind of dangles very very lame like what triggered that she hit a special branch 
she ends up like cutting off Mrs. Voorhees head I think with like a machete or or an axe not that it matters and she's all traumatized worn out about this whole experience and at that point she gets into a canoe heads off down the down the lake and I guess she takes a nap and she has this dream that the drowned boy Jason like comes up out of the water and grabs her and pulls her under and the cops hear about this and then they're like no there was no boy there in the parting shot of the movie you see some like ripples in the water as she would have been coming up I mean you know Jason would have been coming up for air and I just gotta say that if Jason were alive the whole time then we don't have a movie for the first movie so for the second one to make any sense in the way they approach it they just kind of forgot about stuff and that's why this like whole series has always been at best mediocre and I suppose this is one of the best entries of it I mean I'm giving it two and a half out of four stars because for by it being by itself yeah you don't have a lot of the iconic imagery you do have the sound effects the ch -ch -ch -ch. That, that sounds not bad I mean that's really not a bad score when you're working a cheap movie angle at the same time this is trying to clone Halloween and doing a piss poor job of it uh, I know you guys are probably pissed but uh, check back and I'll have my review of part two.